Hello, and welcome back to White Noise Level 3 podcast. This is Tivanaku from Miami, and uh, today we're going to be reviewing Death Valley by Melissa Broder. So uh, this is my first Broder. Uh, She's had others, and uh, basically it's self-described as kind of a comic rendition on, on severe loss. And, and life disappointment uh, for things that she is not able to control. So uh, the book itself uh, is actually, uh, you know, besides that intro, is actually enjoyable because uh, it hits certain techniques that I would use if I were going to write a book. And I was really happy to see that. Uh, number one is her social media. So she'll say something like, um, you know, Burly Bear 101 uh, is a handle on social media and said something like, so it's a very now era book, which is uh, definitely uh, the, the genre, the uh, the tempo and everything that, that I like to consume. So, um, that, so she had that, uh, as far as, as far as the plot itself, unfortunately she's dealing with, uh, the imminent death and loss of her sick father, but then, uh, she doesn't get a break because again, uh, dealing with the now era situation, She's married to uh, her husband, who is a long COVID survivor, and uh, really goes into detail, um, mostly on the father, but yeah, if, in close second is is the husband, how they were before, how they are now. <laughs> Hello, motorcycle. Okay, yeah. Um, I'm streaming from my ninth floor balcony uh, out in Miami, but um, yeah, it's definitely one of these books where there are two different distinct layers. The first layer is sardonic, uh, you know, even even delicious. The way how she's able to um, to put you know two and two together, but. Uh, the underlying, you know, river just right underneath your feet is very, very sad. And it it takes a very skilled writer to do something like that. Um, It's uh, really kind of bizarre. Uh, She's looking for a cactus in an area that doesn't exist. She goes hiking for it with uh, in a park with absolutely no prep, um, you know, essentially flip flops, <laughs> runs out of water almost immediately, uh, and uh, I think I think her writing style is more like what is happening to me now as opposed to what happened to me um, ten years ago, and and that part of it is refreshing. So. On the hike itself, uh, I think she just wants to get away, which, which is understandable <laughs> with everything that's going on. So she checks into a Best Western, talks a lot about the breakfasts at these, you know, uh, highway hotels, and uh, and and then goes on on this, you know, ayahuasca ish hike, um, gets lost, finds this, uh, neighborhood, this, this team of bunny rabbits and, um, really goes into detail is observing their habits. You know, this one does this, this one does that. And it's really cute because I've had three bunny rabbits in, uh, my lifetime here on this planet. So that, that was really, uh, interesting. Um, she's, 
probably the author is probably an animal lover, I'm <laughs> guessing. And in that specific example, it kind of reminded me of uh, when I was younger and uh, out of university, then uh, I went to a Big Ten uh, undergrad. So my experience is normal. It's definitely not unique, but you get out of the town of the university and you're recruited out, out into the world. I was the only one in my class that started working at a large multicultural, uh, multinational CPG uh, headquarters, um, a company um, out of state. So I didn't really know anybody at all. And I was, you know, looking back, I was really young. It was a great experience. I was there for three and a half years, had my had my fill, but it was it was definitely a good experience. And uh, the point is, is that you kind of find your your people, you kind of find your friends in a similar situation as you. So um, it was actually really great for me. We were in a starting class. I was actually in two starting classes, uh, the tech side which was my undergrad and then market research, which is more of the company and what I was doing there. So I had three months of all day training on the tech side, three months of all day training on the market research side. So it was six months of heavy, heavy training, which is fine. I mean, that's what we're used to just coming out of undergrad, you know, the classroom setting, but then uh, you feel very uh, tight with, you know, certain people become friends more than others of your, it's called your starting class. So uh, to the point where uh, I, I'm still in touch with uh, friends from that class. I went to uh, someone's wedding in Kolkata, India. Uh, he was in my starting class. And I still have a dear friend that we have kept in touch this whole time. And even though uh, the friend is out of state, we still talk at least uh, once a week, if not more. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, it's and then and then from there, I actually had uh, other moves, other jobs, other situations. And what's kind of surprises me about that is how you just completely forget what was happening before, uh, especially for me, if I'm moving states and then I'm going to another state um, and then another state, all, all within the United States. But uh, that happened quite a bit, either uh, for personal reasons, a relationship, like I was married <laughs> or, uh, you know, a job transfer. And I think um, your brain is so focused on, at least for me, okay, where's the bakery? Where's the cheese shop? <laughs> I'm good. If I can find a good bakery, and in particular a cheese shop, uh, cheese shop, then um, everything else just kind of fits into place. <laughs> so uh, I think uh, that was what I was seeing in, in this book as well, where... Uh, while she was hiking, she was really involved in trying to survive, um, finding water, um, getting out of the sun, and 99% of her consciousness was there. As, and it, it's, it's more of an escapism to what's waiting for her. Uh, towards the end, of course, some uh, some dreams that were very relevant as to what is is happening while she was leaving, um, and and finally, uh, what what I thought was also really touching is how she just stuck with her husband, because you know a lot of people might just say, you know, I think I, this is just this one life. I'm just gonna, you know, not deal with this long COVID recovery. Uh, she went into detail as to all of the side effects. A lot of them were unpleasant, just unromantic side effects. But it, 
didn't seem like that was in the picture for her. Uh, she's just dealing with it, dealing with it, just like the uh, eventual loss of her father. And uh, it, it's also really touching because while she was lost and missing for a bit, then uh, her husband was trying to do whatever he could to, to find her. Um, so that, that shows, you know, some, some support that she has in her life uh, to, deal, to deal with all of this, even though the husband is sick. So uh, one of the techniques then would be just focusing on the now. Uh, for example, it was something like when she was visiting her father, uh, although that situation is really sad, it's not like the father was improving. Then she mentioned that the nurse uh, within the same visit had a a certain color of hair and then when she came back she had a different color of hair you know like green and blue and that part uh, the way how she writes about it it, ac it actually just does make it kind of the whole the whole scene just kind of bizarre and um, and witty uh, just kind of more bizarre but it gets you out of the um, you know the lower state of of impending doom when it comes to losing a loved one. So uh, I, I definitely recommend the book. It's short. Uh, again, I, I use audiobooks, so it was only five hours, uh, which is about half the time as, as most books. So I was able to devour it pretty quickly. In the audiobook, there are no special effects or anything you know, like hearing cars go by or something. It's just the narrator, which is fine, uh, female narrator. And uh, yeah, I, I find it refreshing. It probably isn't something that you want to read immediately after uh, a big loss of your parents. Um, like for me, it's been a bit since my mother passed away. Uh, I wouldn't have been able to, it, it would have just been too close to, um, you know, beforehand, if I, if I, uh, I, I would not have picked this book up um, beforehand, but now that there's um, some time and some reflection and some healing, uh, then, then it almost seemed like it was appropriate for me at this, at this time uh, with the loss of my mom. Um, just in a way, knowing that I'm not the only one going through this and there are different ways of, of processing. So yes, um, definitely pick up Death Valley by Melissa Broder. She's written other books. Uh, I don't know if it's the same kind of style, but if you want a contemporary book on, on loss and dealing with uh, illness of an intimate partner, then this is definitely the book for you. Definitely. So it's short and compact, but it, it definitely holds a lot. All right. Um, now I am going to talk about uh, my life update. Um, I know that most of you are probably more interested in that, uh, being that I've had this podcast now for several years. So um the big news is that I have a foster puppy. Um, she's four years old and her name is Mirabelle. She's a cruelty intake case from the local shelter. So when she arrived uh, last August at the, sh no, I'm sorry, last April at the shelter, um, she was on a wing and a prayer. I mean, completely undernourished, underweight, she had layers of a flea infestation all over her. They were just crawling and moving and feeding all over her back. Um, she was probably used as a breeder. She, she it looked like she just gave birth. So when I adopt, when I uh, fostered her starting in, in August, she was just scared of the world. I mean, she wouldn't get into the car. As, 
Uh, I had to pick, I had to drag her over there, pick her up. And, and she's a, she's a big girl now. She weighs about 58 pounds. So they gave me a harness and then, uh, you know, that's a little bit easier <laughs> to get in the car and she is getting better. At least now she walks in the car and she doesn't look so terrified, but I'm guessing they probably kept her in a crate. They don't give me any details, but there's a special place in hell for somebody that, that treats animals this way. So if I could just, I can't save them all, unfortunately, but if I could just help them, you know, one at a time along the way, then that's everything to me. So uh, tomorrow we're going up with a family friend, a doctor, retired doctor, in my little car, and Maribel's, Maribel is in the back. Uh, we have to go once a month to the shelter, which is fine. It's everything's free. They give you everything free. It's basically a checkup, you know, a fairly involved checkup, um, probably with behavioral therapists, making sure everything's okay with her. And uh, they give me interceptor and next guard or something. It's for uh, flea and tick, oral flea and tick, and uh, heartworm prevention. All of this is free. Um, food. So I still have the dry food, but they'll give me uh, cans of wet food. So all I really have to do is provide the housing and, and the fun and, and the love. And um, she's, she's my, my white uh, shadow. Um, she's a cross between a Dogo Argentino and an American Staffordshire Terrier. So she's, she's mostly white with that target um, dog, uh, you know, black circle, black eye. So she's just so cute. And she follows me everywhere. I mean, I'm surprised she isn't right here, but she always knows where I am. Uh, yesterday I was taking a shower and she does this little trick. <laughs> I was bending over to get some shampoo and then I see her little head popping in, like making sure like in the shower, like making sure like, are you, are you, are you really there? I, I saw you go in, but I just want to make sure that you're okay. And you're really there. <laughs> oh, she's so cute. Um, I never feel alone. Um, Cause I have a bunch of other dogs and cats, but she is definitely on like watchdog, you know, control here. Uh, everything's on lockdown. If she hears anything in the hall, uh, I, I certainly didn't train her how to do this. I don't even know how to train um, at all, but she'll uh, run over there growling at the door, barking. So, um, so that's, it's an ex she's an excellent watchdog and, um, and we all love her. So uh, I hope she gets adopted. If not, uh, she's definitely uh, welcome to stay with us, which is perfectly fine with me. So that's Mirabel, um, you know, really uh, 180 from uh, when she came in, uh, which coincidentally is the same day exactly that she came into the shelter that is my, um, my parents' anniversary. <laughs> so so that, I think that's a sign. And uh, it just goes to show that you never really know what's around the corner. Um, you know, your, your life could really change for the better and start changing, changing almost imme immediately. So um, I know they can't talk, but um, I, I hope they like living here with me. I, I try to do what I can to um, make sure their needs are met and that they feel loved and that we all have fun together, and, um, you know, take her on, take them on walks and, and snacks and everything. So they're they're definitely my life <laughs> um finally easter is right around the corner so if i don't talk to you guys soon then uh happy easter or uh, applicable uh holiday that you celebrate and i'm not kidding but i do have uh two little baby doves one has hatched so uh, she hatched about she or he hatched about uh, two days ago. So this is her second day on this planet. And uh, the baby dove is, is, this tiny little baby dove is right next to the sibling, which is still an egg. And, uh, and uh, we're all waiting for the egg to hatch. 
Yeah, doves uh, usually lay two eggs. So one egg comes first, and then a couple of days later, it's the second egg. So it'll, it'll probably be um, anytime now. And uh, yeah, we we had some pretty bad storms here in Miami. Uh, there was a tornado watch. I don't know if anybody is familiar with Ultra Music Festival, EDM, electronic music. Um, pretty huge. About 200,000 people uh, come in here from all, all over the world for it. And because of the bad weather yesterday, it's it's all weekend, but they had to cancel. Uh, I think I think that everybody had to leave at 9.30 last night, which is really sad. But I'm sure they're having a great time now. Um, like I said, I, I went there five times, um, five years, I think five years in a row when I was younger. And uh, now just watch it on, on stream. <laughs> Um, all right, guys. Well, we'll talk to you soon. And drop me a comment if you've read the book or what you think about this, this review, um, or what you did during this uh, Easter time. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye.